It's a dreary morning in southern Appalachia. We've had several days of rain on and off. It rained during the night. It's pretty foggy this morning. It's supposed to be more rain by the end of the day. You can really tell there's a feeling of fall. A fall is definitely afoot. We still had warm temperatures this week, but it's just something you can feel and you can notice in the signs around everything if you pay attention. Our fall things are really starting to come on though, the things that we've planted in our fall garden. So today I'm gonna do my first fall garden tour. start right here with my rattlesnake beans. This was not necessarily as much a fall planting as during the summer. We've never done this before. When these beans back here, rattlesnake beans, they kind of started dying out. Bugs had got on them. They'd kind of got spent from the sun, from the heat. We pulled them all out and we replanted them. We've never done that before, but I think we will always do that in the future because you can see how lovely they are and you can see how they're really producing right now. So it's amazing that we're still having green beans and these, if they, they should, they'll continue to produce at least a couple of more weeks, which is just wonderful. We usually don't have, won't have green beans that late in the season. So that's definitely been something, a new trick we tried this year that really worked for us. I know a lot of people do that, but between work and just being in the habit of doing the, same, the things the same way we do them every year, we've never tried it until this year. But this one has definitely been a success. As we move back here into the back, into these beds and different garden areas that we have back here, we still have quite a bit of stuff growing. We've still got some tomatoes growing from summer, from early summer. Uh, they're kind of died out on the bottom, but they've kind of had some new regrowth on the top. Not anything like our first, uh, the first blush of tomatoes or even as the, the summer went on. We don't have that many, but they're still producing a little bit and they've got green tomatoes on them. So we'll definitely uh, be looking forward to eating them. The Malabar spinach, you can see that's the arch back there, the green arch. It's still going strong. I really love it for a variety of reasons because of the taste for sure, but because it does do so good for us and it will, it will continue to look like that until the first hard freeze. And then it'll just kind of, like a lot of things that a hard freeze will get, it just kind of turns it to mush and, and that'll be the end of it till next year. But it's still really, really doing good. Um, we have tore out some of our tomatoes in this bed right over here. I'm going to show you that was where all of our Tommy toes were and we've already tore the, those out and replanted some of the fall things that I'll show you in just a moment. But around the edges of this bed behind me that I'm about to show you and then in a little bit of other places, we still have some Tommy toes growing. One of my favorite ones, um, it just kind of reseeds itself. We don't plant them. We didn't plant any of these that I'm about to show you and it's called Matt's Cherry. I think it's Matt something else, Matt Sweet Cherry maybe. But I planted it several years back because of the name, because of Matt. I thought, well, we should try that. And it is really, really tasty, but it's really small. It's a really tiny uh, Tommy Toe, uh, even smaller than the other ones that we grow. So it's really hard kind of to try to put up or do anything with. So I never did plant it again, but on purpose. But thankfully it volunteers every year in several different places in my gardens. In my flower bed, I've got some. I've got some right here in the herb bed and then some in the beds behind me. So this is our herb bed and it's kind of dying back as you would expect. You can see we've really been harvesting the oregano and the lemon balm. Uh, we've been doing various things with it, drying it. My dill's kind of gone to seed, but I hope it'll reseed itself. Got some parsley down there. And here's some of those wonderful little, little Tommy toes that just reseed themselves. They're so good, so tasty, and it's so wonderful to still have them this time of the year. Over in this end, we have some yarrow. Here's a here's one trying to a tomato. It don't really have any on it, but it does have some bloom, so we'll see. I've got some basil, some sage, and I planted just a few butter beans back there, but they they're mostly about died out. I planted them earlier, but I I got like a handful off of them a day or so ago. We cooked with my peas, but next year I definitely want to plant more of them. 
Now, another thing we did for the first time this year, as, as we pulled out the beans, we also pulled out half of the cucumbers and replanted them. They've not done as good as those beans did. You can see kind of they, even the ones I replanted quickly just kind of succumb to, to disease and to some bug damage. And I've not got one cucumber off of them yet. Although I see some, there's some about that big, so maybe I'll get a few. But they definitely did not do as good as the, the beans have just been wonderful. But the replanting the cucumbers really didn't. I'm not sure that we'll get any more than if I had just left the ones that were there that was still producing, but all but looking kind of raggedy. I might have should, should have just left those there and probably would have ended up with more cucumbers. Back here was our new ground, the first time we planted anything back here behind the greenhouse this year. And we planted winter squash and a few melons. The melons, Matt was right, they did nothing. I think I got two little yellow canary melons. Neither one of them was very good, so I shouldn't have planted them. As far as the winter squash, we've got, I see right now, there's like three butternuts laying there that I need to get. And then um, I thought that I planted a, a new one. It's a, a lady's name, I can't remember it. But now that I see it growing, I'm pretty sure it's a spaghetti squash, so I don't, I don't, I, I like those okay, I just didn't plant, <laughs> that's not what I thought I was planting. So it's produced two of those. And then way at the end, you can see, I don't know if you can see, you can see kind of the um, vine is starting to go up into the woods. That's a Chambers Creek pumpkin, and it has a pretty good sized pumpkin on it, so at least I'll get one big pumpkin out of it uh, if it matures before cold weather gets here. And I think, it, I think that it definitely will. Now, since this was the first time we planted here, I still think it'll be a great place. We just need to definitely work on the soil. We put down cardboard and we put some compost from our chickens. We put some mushroom compost uh, and some like bag dirt that we had from the store. So it didn't have probably maybe that much on top of the cardboard. Not a, not a great deal to work with, but hopefully as the years go on and we continue to build it up, it will do as good as our other gardens. And I really do think it's a great place for winter squash or melons if I could get them to grow because you can just let them grow like that one going up into the woods. It's not hurting anything. It's not in the way of the driveway like my the ones I have in the front of the yard. It's not in the way of the mowing when you're mowing because we've not done anything back here. So I do think it's a great, great garden bed. It just needs to be improved. Here's two of the little fall things that I planted. I planted kale. Now these were the ones my friend gave me that I really love, but I kind of began to see maybe why she doesn't like the flat ones because they kind of kind of bulge out. I wonder if Matt could make me some, cut some sticks to put in there to hold them straight, give them more structure and that would probably work, but they're definitely, definitely growing stuff. You can see the kale in that one. And then for whatever reason, you can see the kale in this one has really took off and I've already been harvesting a little bit of it, just a leaf here and there. Look at that little, little diamond of water. Isn't that beautiful where the rain's captured there? Just sparkling, so pretty. So here's some more bags that we planted some kale in for the fall. And you can see just a few coming up in that one, doing okay, but definitely not as good as that other one. Again, this one beside it's doing way better, got a lot more in it. Then the one on the very end, something has eaten it. It's all, you can see where it's snipped off. Not sure what it was, if it was a rabbit, maybe. I'm not sure, but something definitely has been eaten on that one. So in this little bed, this is where we had our tommy toes that we pulled out. And we've planted some radishes, two rows of radishes, which are really, you can see, they're going to be ready to eat just any time now. I see some red on that one. And then in the back there, I planted some cabbage. So it kind of come up spotty. I have one down there on the end, and then kind of a little bunch together that I definitely could divide and spread out. I will do that. And then two on this end or three or four that I could definitely spread out. So I'm going to try to do that. Probably be good to do it during this rain. So this is the first time we've ever tried to go grow cabbage in the fall, fall of the year. So we'll see how that does for us. Radishes always do good. And I love radishes. Granny loves them. Miss Cindy loves them. Matt and the girls don't really care about them. There's some little, see some little little mushrooms right there growing.
So this kind of monstrosity of green here, what this is, is these are those late tomatoes that I planted. First time we ever planted tomatoes late too, kind of for a fall crop. I bought the ones, Celebrity is the variety uh, from the store. I had, I think I bought four, and then I had two from Cuttings, just Tommy Toes that we actually, that I just took from our, the ones that we had growing and then planted them. So if I look down in here, I can see tomatoes everywhere. They're definitely producing tomatoes. I see probably four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, lots of tomatoes on the Celebrity. There's more back there with a lot of blooms. I need to get in here. There's some, um, just some, some leaves that are beginning to turn yellow and brown. So I need to get in here and kind of trim those back. But so far the tomatoes are doing great. So if they actually get ripe, which I hope they will. I think they've got time to get ripe. Of course, we can enjoy them green. Matt loves fried green tomatoes. Me, not so much, but Matt likes them. So we could definitely enjoy them that way or make some pickles or something like that with them. But they've done really good and they've grown so big and bushy that we've really, and because we, we put them in the grow bags, they really don't have much support. So if we do it again next year, that might be something we need to think about. They've kind of sprawled out into the yard and Matt will um, kind of, put them back in place and he's got some stakes in there that he's attaching them to and then they'll grow beyond that and kind of fall back out again. But so far, they're really doing great. So here's some mustard greens that we planted. They're doing pretty good. But a lot of the stuff we planted up here just didn't even come up. It just never even sprouted. So I'm going to try to plant some plant again. Today's a pretty good planting day. Even though it's wet, I might try to stick a few seeds in. And you can see that row, though, that did come up down through there. The problem is I can't remember what I put there. I don't think it's radishes. I think it might be rutabagas. And if it is, I'm really excited about that because I've never really been able to grow them. Um, and the row behind it that's not as thick, that is turnips. So a little bit more turnips for us. Uh, and we have a, a, some back up here behind the okery. And then that more lush green patch down there that you see, that's butter beans that we planted about midsummer, probably in June or July, about the time our freezer died. So I can't remember exactly, sometime in that, that time period. And then there's also some bush beans down there, but they've, they've about played out. They're about, about gone. Down here in this lower part, this is where our winter squash was. And so most of it's all died out. There's a few vines still growing. You can see one pumpkin right there, just a small one, just a small one. The big daddy pumpkin that I've grown this year is this one right here. It's a big one. That's, um, I think that's a Chambers Creek pumpkin. And it took all year to actually grow. There's one just below it, but it's smaller. I'm worried about this one actually getting ripe, but I think now, I was worried, I think now it's gonna be fine because you can see how it's beginning to turn orange. So I hope it, hope it makes it. And it took, I don't know why it took all summer for them to kind of really take off, but at least they did finally, finally produce. One thing we do have plenty of still coming in is okra. I can barely keep it cut. In fact, it needs to be cut now. Last week, Matt said he was kind of horrified. He'd be horrified again because it's rained so much and I've been so busy this week. I've not cut it, not one time since then. So it definitely needs to be cut. I see putting up okra in my, in my near future. But, and some of it has got so tall this year. I think it's the tallest it's ever grown. The tallest one that I see is that variety Silver Queen that, that Katie got me for Christmas a couple of years ago. And it is, I can't reach, I'll have to bend it over to actually harvest from it. While the garden is mostly dying out and you know the fall things are just starting to come on and it's kind of disappointing, some of them have not produced or have not started off like I would hope they would have. It's this is the time of the year that I like the least when I come out into the garden because everything is the whole 
beautiful fauna of Appalachia takes on kind of a brown look around the edges. And that's my least favorite time of the year. It's the time of the year that I wish I kind of like had a magic wand that I could just go and push it all back. It's also overgrown and it looks raggedy and and just looks dirty around the edges. Of course, once that passes, what happens is the gar the trees put on their beautiful fall garments, uh, and that's just a beautiful, beautiful time to be in the mountains of Appalachia. But this right now is probably my least favorite time. Like I come out here in the garden, it's the only time that I kind of feel depressed because the, not really depressed, but kind of down and out about it because even though I have a little bit of new growth, it's nothing like that summer growth, which of course fall gardens are not, they're not gonna be like that. That's just not it, not in the spring when you plant everything and everything's bright and vibrant and green. The fall kind of has a different look about it. Uh, it's easier growing stuff in the fall in a lot of ways because of that, you don't have the bug uh, damage as much. The weather kind of seems like it cooperates more. Um, but it is, there is this kind of a sadness and a, to all that decay, and I just wish it would all go away. I love the barrenness of winter when it's all gone, when everything's bare. I think that's beautiful with the starkness of the trees. Uh, it mixed in with the evergreens that we have here in Appalachia. So I do love all the seasons, but this, this kind of transition between summer and fall is my least favorite because of the, the nature of what, it, what everything begins to look like. So I hope you enjoyed kind of seeing what I've got going for fall. It don't seem like that much, but it will be. A, a lot of those greens, they'll last all through winter. Like my kale in the back that I've already kind of been snipping, whether it's the mustard greens or the kale, you can kind of snip close to the bottom to the root and leave the root in there and it will regrow for you. Over the winter, it grows much slower. So it's not like the spring and the summer when everything's really taken off. So it's a much slower process, but it will grow. And if any of that lasts till next spring, uh, when the weather begins to warm up in you know March, early, late February, early March, it'll just take off. It'll just take off and you'll have a, a bountiful um, patch of kale or mustard greens or whatever it is. I hope you do drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia, which is a whole lot about making a garden, feeding your family from the land, those kind of things. But also, so you can, you can kind of go with me and see how our fall garden does this year.